This episode of After Dark is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to support the Boss Rush Network and our family of podcasts, head on over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network. Thanks for your continued support. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Boss Rush After Dark, the alternative podcast show for adults for the Boss Rush Network. It's your boy, LeBron, back in the house tonight. And guess what? The entire squad is here. Welcome back, y'all. I swear, but between like Corey and Patrick just being MIA, it, it it was a different show. I'm not gonna say it was a bad show, because like Stephanie and I had fun last week. Oh I yeah, heard. it was just us. Not so It was sorry, very intimate. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. having fun last week. <laughs> 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 we know you we know you were having issues last week we know, what we happened know to that what did we what did i miss you missed me having absolutely no control over my pals oh, oh. <laughs> yikes been there I don't yeah know what i ate but it it was not good <laughs> oh. well as always beside me is the mad pharmacist stephanie klimov hello uh, back in the saddle, the one, the only PK Pat, uh, PK Power Pat Klein. And hopefully not crying in my sleep this week. <laughs> no, let's hope not. <laughs> Yikes. And and returning down from uh, from the top of Mount Olympus, <laughs> the one, the only Corey uh, Derek. Hello, I'm here. I showed up this week. Welcome Happy to home. be here. Welcome home. Hmm. Don't ever leave again. That's what they say when you get off the bus <laughs> to your hotel at Disney. Welcome home. What? Welcome home. Oh, that's it's don't ever leave again. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. yeah it's a missed cause when <laughs> they don't say be our guest. Mm. Talk about a mouse trap. Am I right? Ha. <laughs> ah. Well, first of all, y'all, happy Wednesday. And happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. Ooh. Never had this much company on Valentine's Day before. I, I love you all. Love you too. Yeah. Depends on the day. <laughs> Just kidding. So, um, how are we doing? I'm hungry. Yeah, I'm hu- oddly because, hungry too. <laughs> is it because y'all are watching me eat popcorn? Is that what it is? That's part I, of that's it. That's part of it. <laughs> Jinx. That, that and like... When I was on vacation, I ate like probably more in one day than I usually do in an entire week. And that included the late night snacks and getting back on my weight loss let me, thing is. Let me ask bad. you a question. Yeah. When you eat when you eat more food than was like your normal consumption, do you do you, I, I feel like absolute shit, you know? Yeah. Does, oh, yeah. Okay, so I didn't know. I didn't know if your inner fat kid was just like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yes, know, my dude. inner my inner fat kid was like, yeah, but my outer fat kid was like, Ugh. hate all this. Like the first day, like the first day, I ate this huge breakfast and I was so excited, and I didn't eat again. Like, and that was at like nine thirty in the morning, and I didn't eat again until like eight o'clock at night because I was so full and blah. And blah. Well, you yeah, know, our our stomachs because they're so stretchy and dynamic like it it shrinks and expands kind of what it's used to so once you cut down a lot of like what you're eating your stomach will in a sense kind of shrink and stay there and be used to it (laughs) Mm -hmm. i have this issue if i don't eat for like a while i get shaky well yeah Mm. that's your low blood glucose right there Mm -hmm. mm-hmm Yeah. So it's like I want to not I want to watch what I eat, but at the same time I get shaky and then I feel like I need to eat everything to get it to stop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um I honestly cannot stand when like um when like uh either I overeat or when I'm eating the way I'm supposed to cuz you know like the average person is supposed to have like 
like four square meals, you know, but, but, you know, like they're not supposed to be like, they should be the size of a, like a, like a small dinner plate and not like a, a regular size plate and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And um, I always feel like, because like, yeah, my stomach is definitely smaller than, you know, at certain points and stuff like that, it always feels like I'm always full. And like, that makes me sluggish and lethargic to the point where it's like, ugh, like, I, like food just turns me off, you know? And yeah, I'm one of those people like, yeah, like, <sighs> I can't, I can't help myself. Like when I'm at parties or like certain, certain events and stuff and, you know, like they, they got the right type of food. Like I'm just going to eat and eat and eat, and, you know? And then, you know, it's not that I hate myself. I just, it's just that I hate the way I feel afterwards. <laughs> the cookies are sitting out there. They have to be eaten. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't hold back. Like, I've, had to, ne- I've, I've had to stop going into my works break room because there's so much food and snacks in there that I it, like I just, if I go in there I won't come out. So I just They're trying to, to keep They're trying to keep you slow. This is like Hansel and Gretel. They're trying to keep you slow so you can't run or walk out. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, I'm oh. stuck in my chair. Got to work. <laughs> Might as well work. Yeah, so oh, um, good times. Mhm. Yeah, so um I did anyone I know, I know, like we're here podcasting. It was like eleven something at night. But did anyone, did anyone do anything interesting for Valentine's Day? Like St- Stephanie kind of got a preview of what I had going, what I, what I, what I had planned. And yeah, like everything that I told Stephanie about in last week's episode, we did. <laughs> well, not not yeah. me and Stephanie, <laughs> my boyfriend <laughs> and I. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, I, I got my Valentine's Day plans kind of done and over with which makes it sound like it's a chore but it wasn't um at my pole studio the owner threw a couple's lap dance workshop saturday night so Mm. we we did that it was a lot of fun um other than that you know uh, my partner just swung by today and we exchanged cards and i kept it simple um as much as i'm a romantic sap i i i I don't want to put the pressure on doing all these things especially on a wednesday night it's whatever it's a day did you um? Did you did you give the lap dance or did you receive the lap dance? I gave the lap dance. Ah, no fun. It's fun for me. He can just sit there. <laughs> well, I'm pretty. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Like, uh, no, honestly, I'm pretty sure it was a very empowering feeling, wasn't it? It was. Uh, I I was very very nervous, so I definitely had some wine. <laughs> to help me kind of which like i'm not nervous because of him or anything but you know it's this throughout my entire pole journey so to speak i've actually never performed for other people i've really only done it for myself Uh like not to sound cliche but i really don't like i don't do it so i can be sexy for other people i'm just like "Ah, i want to be stronger (laughs) so so to be able to do this in front of another person it's like do I look silly? <laughs> fuck that. I, uh, fuck that. You get me up on the pole. I'm trying to be sexy. Oh. <laughs> so but it was cool. You... It was a f- oh, Go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, did you have to employ the uh, the standard rules for lap dancing? It'd be like, you can look, but you can't touch. No, I'm just like, <laughs> rules out the window. It was great just to see a bunch of people in there. We're all like dressed up. Um, and it was just, it was just... Good old time. It really wasn't uh, awkward or weird as maybe some people might think it is. It, it was a good time. And and I do, I, the owner does a great job. She does, you know, a couple's lap dance workshop, but she also did a single's lap dance workshop. So, like, she, you know, does things for everybody so people don't feel like they're excluded. Because I know some people can feel a certain type of way on Valentine's Day, such as myself during the many times I was single on Valentine's Day. So, I get it. I don't think I've ever had a girlfriend during Valentine's Day. It's expensive. I was going to say, maybe it's for the best, because yeah. the majority <laughs> of women will want some sort of big shit. They want wine and dine. Mm-hmm. Which I think is ridiculous, but unfortunately, it happens a lot. Like, this is my day. It's like, lady, if you're with me, every day is Valentine's Day. <laughs> Like, be like, I'm the one shaking my thing up here. Don't demand shit from me tonight. <laughs> oh, man. Valentine's Day. Uh, we didn't do anything. We gave my kids a bath, and then everybody went to bed, except for me. So, uh, 
you know, we are having dinner on Saturday night, though. Yes. With with my kids, though. <laughs> yeah, uh, They're part of the package. Yeah i I was gonna do something for my wife today, but she was like, "Don't you dare buy anything. We don't have any money." <laughs> She's like, "Don't you bring me anything. We're moving. We have money. We don't spend any money." I'm like, "Okay, <laughs> okay." So. That's yeah. when you think out of the box and you make a card with yeah. crayons and cardboard paper and whatever yeah. else your kid has lying around. Yeah, there's enough of it in the living room right now. So do it. Make a card before you go to bed. Put it next to her bedside. That way, when she wakes up, she sees it. Hmm. It's free and it's been a nice surprise. Unless she yells at you because now you have an extra thing she has to move. I honestly spent more time with you guys than I did with her on Valentine's Day. (laughs) Aww. Uh, Now you're starting to make me feel bad. (laughs) You should feel bad. I hope you feel terrible, Oran. I do. (laughs) I do because, like, I mean, like, if you're going to spend all this time with me and stuff like that, I feel like I should have put out, you know? (laughs) I'll see you in a month, Oran. We'll talk then. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> do you know the death stare that we both get from from ed <laughs> i mean ed can join in if he wants do we want him to join is the question <laughs> <laughs> oh god let me stop that that's mean oh. Again, what else expected? <laughs> we love you ed we do don't touch me just not in a sexual way. I'll punch you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, at least you gave him fair warning. You gave him fair warning. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But seriously, don't touch me. I'll punch you. <laughs> I think we should all gang up on Corey and try to give him a very big, uncomfortable group hug. Yeah, I know. Oh, man. That's fine. Is he? Is he touch averse? Is it... are you touch averse? I really don't like it when people touch me, but I'll make an exception Perfect. when we get there. So I'll respect your boundaries. I won't. I won't touch your no no square. Hmm. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I forgot about this show so much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guess what? Guess what? The Bossers Podcast and the Bossers Network are headed to PAX East. <laughs> You'll be able to find us roaming the show floor. So if you're there, come say hi, please. Uh, we'll be covering the event as part of the media, demoing games, conducting interviews. I don't know why I said conducting that way, but yeah. Uh, conducting because we're on a train. Toot, toot. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be recording a, a podcast with you live from the event. So make sure you keep your eye out for uh, keep your eye out for us, and keep your eye on the Bossers dot net and you and our YouTube channel for that. Uh, just so as a reminder, because some people will have forgotten or may not even know this, PAX East is taking place in Boston from the twenty first to twenty fourth of March. So go get your badges now, and then come say hi. Uh, also. If you want to support Boss Rush After Dark and the Boss Rush Network, uh, you can head over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network, where you can get this show in, uh, two weeks early and ad-free, along with all the other perks like early access to uh, the podcast, voting rights, and more at the tiers that's right for you. Again, that's patreon.com slash Boss Rush Network. Uh, if you cannot contribute financially, it's no big deal. Trust me. Trust me. We know. But – we do want you to know that your viewership and listenership are enough for us. If you're watching the video, subscribe to this channel. Uh, leave us a thumbs up as well on, on this video or any of the other videos that you might have caught that you might have caught recently. And then hit that notification bell so you can be notified when the new show goes live. <clears throat> also, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, uh, leave our show a five-star rating and a nice review. It really helps with our visibility and discoverability. Remember, you can always find new episodes, articles, reviews, and more over on our website, which is at bossrush.net. So, now all the banter and all the housekeeping's out the way. Oh, by the way, if you listen to if you listen to any of the Boss Rush podcast episodes, you might be able to win something for free. 
So go back and listen to uh, one or two Boss uh, podcast episodes. Now I've gotten all that out of the way. We can start talking about topics. Right, guys? Topics. Mm-hmm. Corey's the topic tonight. Corey's the topic tonight. Um, how big is it? I mean your shoe it's, size. I mean your shoe it's, size. Well, it's, it's, like a, it's like a 12-er. <laughs> Why do I think you're not talking about your shoe? <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about anything. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, that, that is true. That is true. 13 foot and shove it up your... Yep. Mm. Lily. I'm trying to remember what that quote was from Ace Ventura. Your lily, your lily white ass. That's what The Rock says, right? I don't know. I've never seen Ace Ventura, and I've never watched wrestling, so... Oh, he was at my Ace Ventura. Okay, okay. I'm talking about uh, Ace Ventura. Okay. All right. Oh, well, my bad. I was thinking Dwayne The Rock Johnson. That's, that's all. But... But yeah, Corey, you're back from vacation, and you know what? We want to hear all. We want to hear the good, the bad, the ugly, and the funny. Oh God! So let's see. It was, I would say, ninety percent good overall. Mm -hmm. The kids were good. The experience was good. Um, everybody was well behaved for the most part. Uh, two nights though. One night, my son was throwing up like all night just all night and then he was fine but he was throwing up all night and then the next night after my son was done throwing up my daughter threw up all night and that was like too much did they eat too much sweets what what was going on no they didn't eat they didn't eat hardly anything Mm. they just threw up and it was like really concerning and then they were fine after one night they were fine i don't know what happened what it was how it happened but Man, kid metabolisms are kid metabolisms are amazing, man. Like I swear, like they could be they could be like looking like they're on their deathbed, and like the next minute you blink, they're they're fine. <laughs> oh yeah. I don't I don't get it, but uh, the trip was really fun. Uh, I have to say, my kids rode almost everything that. Nice. Well, they I mean they rode everything that they we've we got in line for right so. Uh, they rode Rise of the Resistance, which is like the massive Star Wars experience ride down there. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was so funny. My, they were just like watching everything because like it's such an experience there. Like Rise of the Resistance is a, it's like part ride, part experience, and it's a tw- it's a twenty two minute experience. So like after you stand in line, you're like going through this rebel or i guess resistance base you're going through this resistance base and then you make your like everything in disney is like role playing so like you are a character in this scene of a movie or this ride or attraction or whatever so like in rise of the resistance you're like a recruit you're a recruit for the resistance and you're being recruited for this secret mission from from leia And so you get put into this chamber where BB-8 is kind of rolling around, kind of doing things. And it's like it's an animatronic BB-8. So he's like really rolling around and doing things and beeping and blooping. And then there's like there's a hall. Wait, wait, wait. BB-8 from? Yeah, Yeah, the one, the ball. Yeah, all the the characters from the, the sequel movies are in the ride. All of them. Okay. Okay, so, so which Daisy Ridley is Ray and she is in the ride. Like she uh, there's like a hollow projector where she gives you the mission from Leia, right? Mm-hmm. And it's really her. And then uh Oscar Isaac pops up on a screen is and is like, Yeah, we're you know, whatever X Wing blue team or whatever is here to escort you to this the secret base to meet Leia, and then you you know walk out of this chamber and you board this aircraft, right? Like the spacecraft that you're going to this moon or whatever. And you see, you see Poe's black X wing off to the, the right. And there's like an animatronic helmet moving around to make it look like he's like in there. And you get in this, you get in this, uh, spaceship and there's, it, it, 
there's an it looks like Admiral Akbar, but it's a different character. I think his name's like Admiral Beck or something. And then you have Neen Nub animatronic, like a looks just like the movies, right? Like they're in there beeping and blooping and talking to you and telling you what the mission is. And like all of the windows, quote unquote, are actually screens, right? And they are like and this chamber like this this vehicle moves a little bit so like when you take off it like shakes a little bit and then like it tilts and does all these things so it really kind of looks like and feels like you're flying in it and the windows behind you there's x-wings flying behind you and you see the planet kind of disappear and you jump into hyperspace right and then you run into this first order space does it feel like a jolt or well like it like the 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 vehicle you're in it's it's like the stationary vehicle that mm-hmm. moves right it's like a yeah so like it like jolts when it goes a little bit so like it really feels like you're moving mm-hmm. um and then you get caught when you come out of hyperspace you run into the first order and there's star destroyers and out the windows you see uh, X wings kind of fighting Tie fighters, and some of them blow up, and some of some of them, you know, shoot the Tie fighters. And uh, anyways, this is where like the attraction really starts, and you get captured by the First Order, and now you're prisoners, and you get caught in the tractor beam. And when the other side of the door is open, you're in the a Star Destroyer, and you walk and, like you walk into this chamber and there's stormtroopers in there and you see X wings kind of like hanging on the hangar. And one of those, like there's this massive wall screen that's made to look like, uh, like you're looking out into space and you see tie fighters flying around and other star destroyers. And it looks like, you know, a chamber and a star destroyer and you, you know, whatever like in a new hope when the the millennium falcons is kind of sitting in the chamber right that's kind of what it looks like and so when you're standing in line for the ride now quote unquote like you're being detained by the first order and there's actors in there and you have to follow these actors who are playing first order officers and you're going into their prison cells and you're being detained in prison cells and then when you're in your prison cell with you know the people that you're going to ride in the car with right um admiral hux and kylo ren show up and they're like you know we know you have information on the secret base that we're trying to find whatever and whatever and then when you go to like how you board your car like there's no doors in this chamber and it looks like the resistance is cutting, like they're crawling through the vents to rescue you. And they cut a hole in the wall and the door, like the door to the cars is this door that swings open, but it looks like they cut it out of the wall. And Finn is there giving you like, we're here to break you out, you know, get in your pod. We've reprogrammed the droids to get you out of here. Right. And then, then this is where the ride starts. And it's like a, it's like a seven or eight minute. It's like a, like a seven minute ride. And you're just kind of like moving through this star destroyer. And you see these at ats and uh, tie fighters and stormtroopers and animatronic Kylo Ren is pulling you with the force. And uh, <laughs> it's like this huge experience. And then you end up like in an escape pod. And like, there's a little bit of a drop and like, that's how the ride ends is like you fly back down to the rebel base that you entered the ride from. And that's, you know, you are going to formulate another plan on how to get you out of this, whatever. If you want to see how you can become a Patreon producer, head on over to patreon.com slash boss rush network. The Patreon producers for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S. Sana Dierig, Francisco Santilan, Matthew Keel, and Todd Oxtra. Thanks for your continued support of the Boss Rush Network. Uh, but it's totally an experience and like there's always a two or three hour line for it and it's Damn. every but every minute of it is worth it. Now granted 
My parents went with us, and my dad has a dis- ha- has a disability pass because he's had surgery on his hips, and so like a lot of the times we got to skip some of the line, or like we'd go in the fast pass line or lightning lane line or whatever it's called these days. So our wait was never as long as the time, right? We, they just show up, they tell you return at this time, and you'll have a shorter wait. And so we were lucky that way. Uh, but that ride in particular is awesome. And the other ride, which I think is the best ride there and nobody wants to ride it with me ever is the guardians of the galaxy ride. Why is nobody want to ride tower it of terror before, right? What? Didn't that used to be like that tower of terror? The no, one, that's at, uh, that's at Disney. That's at Disneyland. This is a oh. indoor, this is an indoor roller coaster. But okay. the thing about this roller coaster is that it goes backwards and the, like it goes forwards and backwards, but also like your train car, each individual car on the train also rotates because they want you to look at certain things while you're riding the roller coaster. Like the, the premise of the ride is that like Ep- it's at Epcot. So like the main draw of Epcot right is world showcase where all the different countries mm-hmm. have their own pavilions or whatever. Well, the premise of this ride is that the, Planet Xandar, which is where the Nova Corps is from, from the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, mm-hmm. wants to teach Terrans about their culture and how they're able to jump through space, right? So the, the whole thing is based on like a pavilion that's like, it's like a country pavilion, but it's a, <laughs> it's from a different planet. So like they have like a topography map kind of lined up and they tell you about their infrastructure and their like how their water works and how their technology works and you know how they're able to jump through space uh with this i don't know whatever but you move through the thing and uh glenn close and terry cruz are kind of leading you through the line of the ride and telling you about the history of the planet yeah terry cruz is like the main character of the ride yeah interesting (laughs) Yeah. Um, but also like Chris Pratt and all of the all the char- like main characters of the movie are also in the ride and they're like guiding nice. you through because that makes more sense than Terry Crews. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. I don't know. You'd why think Terry it'd Crews be is. the other guy, the um, uh, John Riley or what's his John name? C. Riley. Yeah. John C. Riley. Yeah. Yeah. You would think so. But um. So, so he's like Nova Corps. Yeah, yeah, he's like a Nova Corps officer. He's like s- second in command or whatever. Weird. But the whole premise of the ride is like the Celestials are stealing this space jumping thing because they want to go back to the Big Bang and correct you know, because they think life and civilization is a is a screw up and they want to reset everything. So you're jumping through time and space to get this thing back from the celestial before he like destroys life as you know it it's and like the whole thing is like i don't know if in, like in guardians of the galaxy 2 where they're like jumping through the space time portals and like rocket's face and sean gunn's face get all like warped and whatever that's kind of the premise of the ride it's like you're jumping through these different areas uh and that's when your car starts going backwards and forwards and car starts turning and it's crazy it's awesome I love it so much. But the thing about that ride is, is that there's no, you don't stand in line for the ride. You have to wake up at, at like seven o'clock in the morning and enter a virtual queue. Oh gosh. Wow. And get a, and get a boarding pass because it's so popular. And like, if you don't get one, you don't, you don't get to ride it. Like you just don't get to ride it. Really? It's Um, that. Wow. Have these virtual queues. One is the Guardians of the Galaxy ride, and the other one is the new Tron roller coaster that just opened up, which I didn't ride. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's an experience. It was fun. It was awesome. I, It's my favorite ride there by far. But nobody else will ride it because everybody else gets sick on it because it spins and goes backwards. So, I'd, uh, I'd ride it with you. See, you should have took me. Well, you know? Sorry. You didn't invite me. I didn't. I right. hate you. Whoa. I don't have the stomach for <laughs> rides anymore. Uh, I, had, 
I didn't mean that the way it sounded. Uh, I, I hate you the same way your kid will say I hate you, okay? Well, that's fine. Um, so, yeah, those were like the two, my two favorite experiences down there. Uh, and I also... I think I'd do the food for Disney. Yeah. That would be my thing. Yeah, I also ate a lot. I hear Disney has great food. I also ate a lot. Well, I wouldn't say great. Some of the food is great. Some of it's generic you theme your, park food. Did you go to your coveted Earl of Sandwich? I did. I did. I ate 12 sandwiches on vacation. Are you? Well, I thought you meant 12 sandwiches at once. I'm like, no, no, no. I got one. I got one at least every day. And the thing that pisses me off, too, is I bought two for the ride home and I left them in the refrigerator in the hotel room. Oh, no. Uh, I know. I was oh, so, no. I was so mad. I was so mm. mad. So what? what's this about this Earl of Sandwich? Oh, it's the Man. greatest. Sandwich Man, in him the and Josh planet. talk about it all the fucking time. Hey, they follow me on on Instagram and Twitter. So I'm going to sponsor us. I've I've tried. They list. They listen to whoever runs their social media listens to some of our content, if not all of it, because they've definitely commented on things that oh. we've talked about in shows. Sponsor us. So. Please. Give us sandwiches. I think Stephanie, I think there's one in Boston. What? I think there's an Earl Sandwich what? in Boston. Oh, the look. If there's an Earl of Sandwich in Boston, like you are taking me to it, Corey. I mean, I will buy everyone a hot sandwich no. from Earl Sandwich. Let's see. Locations. I think there's Earl one. of Sandwich? Yeah. Yeah, Earl. Yeah, it's on Charles Street in Boston Common. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. Um, How far away is it? Then, then we already know. We already know. First stop. Yep. I I'd be careful. Boston is fickle. If it's on the other side of Boston, that's a two-hour drive. Hey man, we would I'm not just... be driving. We would be taking the tea. Yeah. Totally taking Ta- the tea. Taking the tea. Look, I tell you what. If we <laughs> if we go be, there, we're gonna be like we're gonna be like at the end of the Avengers at at the swarma place. <laughs> Look. I will say this. If we go there, I will buy everyone one sandwich. We are definitely taking the tea. <laughs> okay. okay, Papa. Okay, Papa Cory. <laughs> oh, it's so good, man. The original is like if Arby's was like real food, like real roast beef and real cheddar mm. on like this <laughs> ch- on like this ciabatta are bun. You, are you saying they're not? <laughs> oh, come on. Uh, I'm being dumb. I'm I'm, I'm being stupid. The Earl's Club, also delicious. The uh, the BLT is delicious. What else? Oh, the the Chipotle chicken avocado. Oh, stop talking about the food. Now I'm salivating. Oh, so good. What else? What else is good there? They got breakfast sandwiches. They have the they have the holiday favorite sandwich, which is like. A Thanksgiving dinner on a sandwich. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, hey, Stephanie. Mm. All right, if we do this, okay, like, like I want you to be my, I want you to be my partner. So we both buy a foot long, and then we, sw- and then we. There's only one size. Half. There's only one. Oh, okay, well, whatever. they do cut it, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Will you be the partner that like buys something different, so we have like two halves of of, of different sandwich? One hundred and twenty percent. <laughs> All right, oh, I want to. I want to experience. Cannonball. I want to experience Holy this as much as possible. They also have. They also have new breakfast bowls, which I did not try. But breakfast bowl. Mm-hmm. See, they they trying they they trying to have all of our money during during packs. Mm-hmm. Oh, Caribbean jerk. Mm. Mm. You're a jerk. A brookie. Yeah, a it's a it's a brownie and a cookie merged together as one thing. I had three of them on vacation. <laughs> and they're not small either. They're like they're like this. They're like this big. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Man, all this looks freaking amazing. It is amazing. I will have to say I've never had their breakfast, so I can't tell you if that's amazing, but their sandwiches are amazing. Even the Caprizi sandwich, which is just like cheese and tomatoes and essentially is like pretty good for a vegetarian option so uh oh my 
Gosh, that holiday turkey, their Italian, that cannonball meatball mm-hmm. sub. Dude, their meatballs are huge, too. Jesus. This thing looks amazing. Oh, um, but yeah, also, I had about four gallons of blue milk <laughs> in, that... in the Star Wars land. Okay, okay, how's it taste? Because like when I saw them drinking the when I saw Luke drinking that blue milk in in in, in uh in episode eight, I was like, oh hell no. <laughs> um the thing they have so they have blue milk and green milk. It's not milk. Mm-hmm. It tastes more like a a smoothie type consistency. Mm-hmm. Uh the gr- blue milk is definitely <laughs> the one to get. The green milk is more for like I would say hardcore vegans like it doesn't have any type of whatever. It's all plant based liquid type thing. Uh, so. But yeah, the blue milk is very good. Everybody wanted one and then they would all take like three sips, four sips of it. And they're like, oh, this is really good. You want the rest? Yes. Yes, I do. And then I ended up drinking like four of them in one sitting. And then it was like, I don't want this much blue milk ever (laughs) because it just sits. Yeah. Did what? Did your your son like have a highlight? Like what was his favorite? Um, So I so it's funny because like with kids, you always think like, oh, Magic Kingdom, the castle and all the kid (laughs) rides and you know, which my kids loved, right? Like they love Dumbo and my daughter likes the teacups and the mm-hmm. classic stuff. Right. And like, we all love Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean and Jungle Cruise, whatever. But like my daughter loves Epcot. And, really? And like the ne- she's like, the next time we go, can we only do one day at the castle park and do multiple days at the other parks? I was like, I'm okay with that. Look, as long as I can ride, as long as I can ride Haunted Mansion once and uh, Pirates once, I'm good to go. You know? Wow, uh, that's surprising. As a kid, I really did not like Epcot. I thought Epcot was so boring as a kid. Yeah, Epcot's really changed. Um, there's a new Moana water experience there. Where it's called the Journey of Water. And, like, you know, if you can play, like, literally play with the water with pretty much connect motion controls like you know you can make it jump up you can throw it one way or the other without ever touching it there's like water music a water music player to where like you can run your hand through the water and it plays strings like a guitar and uh there's a water play place so it's like this whole thing based on moana okay that's pretty cool i want to do that yeah it was it was really cool it's a it's a walkthrough experience it's not like a ride but (laughs) Mm-hmm. Um, and you can spend as much time or as little time as you want in there. Uh, the Living Seas, which is like their aquarium, is all Finding Nemo themed now. I mean, it has been for uh, quite a while now, but like to get into the aquarium, you sit in a seashell and ride through the movie of Finding Nemo, uh, which is really cool. Nice. Uh, and then there's a frozen ride over there now, which my daughter loved. There's uh, in France, there's a Ratatouille experience ride over there. Um, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of stuff for kids to do there. Now, there's um, like every country has like a. We went during the the Festival of the Arts, which there's always some sort of festival at Epcot now. And there's like a craft station at every pavilion now. And my daughter loves that stuff. And uh, they gave you stickers to fill out your quote unquote passport um, around the world. And uh, and then there's definitely like, changed. Wow. Yeah. Germany has this little like miniature town with a bunch of trains, like little electric trains that just drive around this little town and my son watched it for like 15 minutes and he loved it. Oh, um, <laughs> and then, like I said, guardians of the galaxy is there and test track is there, which is the car fast car ride, which is like, doesn't do anything for me. I drive 65 miles an hour every day in a car. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> but 
Uh, and then there's Mission Space, which is like a space launch simulator where you're launching in a rocket to Mars. And it, like, there's two sides. There's one that's just like, oh, I'll just watch the screen while my car kind of tilts or whatever. But then there's one that like, sim. It's like a simulator, and so many people get sick on there because the it like spins and simulates zero G and does all these things. It's really intense. Uh, and then, of course, my favorite character there is is Figment, the little purple dragon. The ride sucks, but the ride sucks. Fun. Well, they changed the ride. The original ride was really cool, uh, but the new ride kind of sucks. And they're they have plans to kind of refurbish it to do more of the original style. But uh, I mean, right now it's based off like famous inventors in like the Disney pantheon. Right. So it's like the honey, I shrunk the kids guy and Robin Williams from flubber. And, you know, one of the guys from uh, Monty Python, it's just like this, these weird people that nobody cares about anymore. Right. Like nobody knows. Sorry. Nobody now that goes there knows Rick Moranis from honey. I shrunk the kids. Right. That's not a relevant movie. Which so, is a travesty, but okay. They were gonna make, yeah. I thought they were planning on making a new one. There's a Disney Plus show. Like Rick Moranis was actually coming. There, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a show coming. Yeah, there's a Disney Plus show yeah. called Shrunk, and Josh Gad is going to play the son, and Rick Moranis is returning as the dad. Nice. So, uh, but yeah, Figment's awesome. I love Figment, and he's a character meet and greet now. We missed him, though, because they we rode the ride too late, but... Uh, but yeah, and then Hollywood Studios. My daughter and my both my kids love Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, which is based on the new Mickey Mouse cartoons that came out like a, I don't know, a couple years ago. Um, you know, there's the Disney Junior stuff over there that they love. Toy Story Land is over there. Star Wars, Indiana Jones is there. So yeah, my kid, my kids love those parks. And then there's a car, like a the movie Cars. There's a show over there, a Lightning McQueen show that my son loved. Oh my gosh, my son just went ballistic in there. <laughs> um, so yeah, they they love it there. And then we didn't even go to Animal Kingdom, and my daughter found out that there's a, a quote unquote zoo at Disney World, and now she wants to go there. So, huh. We just Animal Kingdom is just it's like a half day park. And if you only go for a certain amount of time, you don't really want to waste a day there unless you really have to or want to. Right. So gotcha. we're going to try it next time and see. Uh, is it just a standard? No, there's like, like there's like a safari experience there, which is like really fun. And there's a couple rides there and a couple shows that are really good. But like they're tearing out the dinosaur area. There's like a dino land there that they're ripping out and they just built a whole area dedicated to avatar. And there's two avatar experiences there. Uh, that the restaurant over in that area is actually really good though. There's like these cheeseburger pods that are really good. Um, and then they have like their own version of Chipotle. That's like all avatar themed, but it's just okay. Chipotle. It's just Chipotle. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's going to be worth going there in like four or five years because they're remodeling like half the park. But right now it's just like, you know, there's a couple rides that my kids are too small for a safari experience. And there's a really awesome Lion King show there. And then there's a um, like it's like like half Broadway Lion King, half musical type thing uh and then there's a finding nemo musical over there that is really cool that my kids would love but when we like when we go there we literally only spend like three like two or three hours there and then we go do something else because it's just i don't know it's not really that interesting for us but yes there is also like part zoo so you can go see like there's a gorilla exhibit and a tiger exhibit and bird exhibit that you can go and a bird show and 
I don't know. It's, there's all these things there. So, but yeah, it was fun. It was a good time. I enjoyed myself. Nice. Also, it truly is a magical place. Mm, Sorry, yeah. what? Our hotel was awesome too. Uh, we, it's my favorite hotel, but it's definitely not the best hotel for children. Uh, we stayed at a, a hotel called Port Orleans French Quarter, and it's all based on turn of the century uh, New Orleans and Mardi Gras and like their food court area. I'll try and earn their beads. What? Yeah. Like when you enter your room, they have beads on the bed for you. And uh, their kind of food court cafeteria area is all based on like a parade float manufacturing plant. And there's like all these quote unquote float parts on the walls and Mardi Gras masks. And uh, also real beignets mm -hmm. powdered sugar and chocolate everywhere mm -hmm. oh mm -hmm. so good so that was fun also my son there's a giant chess board in the courtyard and my son threw the giant chess pieces at the golf carts with the that the employees drive and he thought oh, it was geez. the funniest thing so these chess pieces were like as big as he is and he would like chuck them at the golf carts as they drove by and then growl at them so <laughs> funny like, it was one of those things where you have to tell him not to do it, but you secretly think it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. So. And there. Well, I guess uh, we need to have a boss rush retreat down there at some point, and you can be our guide. It's it's fun. I would love that. Um, someday, maybe. Someday. Someday, I would love that. So... Maybe we'll do it when uh, Epic Universe opens down there and we can do a day at Universal at Nintendo World Land. Oh, area. this is what this is what I meant to ask you when you were talking about Star Wars stuff. Uh, did you build a lightsaber? No, it costs like three hundred dollars. <laughs> Yo, I did not know that. <laughs> yeah, no. it is a cool experience, though. I would I'm going to do it when my son is old enough. We're going to do it together. But to do it by myself is not, you know probably something i should be I, did not know, I did not know damn yeah you can so they have like the legacy lightsabers down there which are, they're like full on whatever mm -hmm. 200 250 dollars for and they come out with new ones all the time like they a couple months ago when ahsoka came out they came out with the ahsoka short ooh, the, sabers the, ooh, God. And, you, and you got two I, of two of them I've for 250 dollars i know her i always loved her lightsabers yeah uh when Jedi Survivor came out, Cal Kestis's lightsaber came out. When Obi Wan came out, his lightsaber was re released. Um the mm. Qui Gon the Qui Gon one's coming out soon because the twenty fifth oh, anniversary. One? Yeah, the twenty fifth anniversary of episode one is this year, mm. I think. So that's like their big release this year is the Qui Gon one. So yeah, but I, I would love to build my own lightsaber, but it's expensive. Also, like they have like the rare colors that everybody wants, but there's only like like the yellow or the white crystals. There's only like one or two in every group that goes in to build the lightsaber, and it's like a 20 minute, 25 minute experience. Mm -hmm. So and everybody wants the white or the yellow one. <laughs> of, of course. So, yeah, I'm sure when uh, whenever that next Star Wars movie comes out with Ray, the yellow, the Ray's lightsaber will be the the legacy one they release. Wait, what? Wait, a new movie? Yeah, with Ray. Mm -hmm. I thought. Yeah, Daisy Ridley I, is making a new. I movie. thought she was. I thought she was over it. No, last year's Star Wars Celebration, they announced a new movie where she is rebuilding the Jedi Order. And apparently Oscar Isaac is also going to be Poe, reprise his role as Poe. And they're, I think Disney's trying really hard to convince John Boyega to come back, <laughs> even though they well, kind of screwed him over. over. Yeah. yeah, I know he's over it. They really screwed him. <laughs> so, but yeah, Daisy Ridley's coming back as Ray. Hmm. 
Interesting. You know what? Let me ask. Let me ask you this. Um, do you think they should just move on from like the whole like Skywalker saga? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's probably what this is about. No, it can't you know? be about that. If Ray took on the Skywalker name at the end of Episode Nine, spoiler alert. Dude, nobody it doesn't mean it has to be about Skywalker. Dude, that was the so. only thing that made sense in Episode Nine. So. <laughs> Let's be honest here. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, I definitely think they need to do that. They need to get away from this whole era of Star Wars. They either need to go really far back in time, like either High Republic or Old Republic era. Well, I, what I would love to see is like a Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, yeah. Set of movies with Revan or. They need to go so far flung in the future that whatever happens now is like myth and legend and nobody really knows what happened and they just need a new set of characters and maybe there's hints, but they don't like plaster it all over the screen. Oh, look, Mark Hamill's back and we CGI would his face on an actor and it kind of looks not like him, but sort of does. And then the, like, then like the next series the comes out and they look just die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So and then, uh, you know. Oh, there's uh, Princess Leia, but we used old footage and fake actors to try to, you know, hide that she died before episode eight came out. Um, nine. So it was nine. She she made it through all of eight. No, she she made it through eight, but she died before it came yeah. out. I think or like right after it came out or something. Not I know she died. I thought she was filming nine and that's where. No, that no. All of nine is is old footage or remapped footage. Um. So yeah, I mean they they need to do something different with Star. Wars. I'm t- I'm like even the even the Mandalorian stuff like Boba Fett. Come on, and Luke again. Come on. Look, look. Like, I'm 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 gonna tell you like the Boba all the Boba Fett stuff was fan service. Like I I I, I you know like. There's a part of me, like, I understand, like, you know, Boba Fett was a very popular character, you know, during the original trilogy days and stuff like that. And, you know, like, mm-hmm. and, like his extended his extended beta canon in the comics and, and the books and stuff like that. But making the book of Boba Fett was, that was legit fan service. Now, i sure saying that, though. I love seeing it, though, because, like, I was always like, how the fuck did he make out the Starlight Pit? <laughs> I was, I... I, I was know, like man. that, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it's good they adapted that part of the story. So, you know, like that vindicates those people that, you know, like are ha- are always upset that, you know, like a lot of beta canon like gets thrown by the wayside when like the franchises like spent, you know, like start their spinoffs in like either TV or movie form and stuff like that. So, you know, like that was a that was a win for the fans. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But that that being said, you know, it's like, come on, like y'all, y'all, y'all did y'all did the cash grab hard because, like, honestly, like you could have just you could just had the Mandalorian and not had Boba Fett and you weren't involved and nobody would have been none the wiser. Yeah, I definitely think my favorite of the new Star Wars stuff, like the reason, not, I mean, I liked Rogue One. I think Rogue One's great. I think Andor's great. I think I, episode I, seven. I love Andor. I really liked episode seven. I know it was pretty safe, but it was, uh, I really liked it. But my favorite thing I think is the, is I think Ahsoka because I don't, it was like the first time I felt like, and I know it's not new because I know clone wars and whatever else, the cartoon stuff exists. But like, if it was the first time star Wars kind of felt new to me since like maybe the prequels, (laughs) um, which was nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because I don't know who any of those characters are and they didn't really like hammer at home that it was part of this other thing. So also everybody who says that you need to watch Clone Wars to understand Ahsoka, you guys are all full of shit. I understood you every don't. minute of it. You and, don't. Yeah. Uh, I've never seen an episode, so you guys can yeah. go put a lightsaber in your mouth and turn it on. Um, so, but yeah, Disney was fun. Star Wars needs to change. And uh, yeah, hardly any Marvel stuff, though, at Disney because of the weird universal contract. 
So uh, they're not allowed to use the day. Avengers of the X Men, but they can use cosmic stuff and uh, like Doctor Strange and Black Panther and stuff like that. I don't know how. Wait, what? 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 Yeah, the universe, the Universal contract, Marvel. So Marvel signed a contract to before Disney bought them mm-hmm. to put the Marvel characters in the theme parks there. Oh, okay, okay. So okay, this is something, this is something completely different. Okay, yeah, but it's only Florida. It's only the Florida park. Well, it's any Disney park east of the Mississippi River, which is like a weird contract stipulation, right? But like. A lot of people are kind of pointing out that Disney is going to try to buy it out. Buy out the contract because of Epic Universe and the Nintendo stuff and um, Harry Potter stuff and all like they don't need that stuff anymore. So really, the only thing that Universal would own would be the Hulk solo stuff. Which is crazy. Anyways, I could talk about this all day, but we've already been going for over an hour, so we should probably uh, okay. either have a part two or end it here. Or... Do you want to have a part two? <laughs> I, that's up to everybody else. I really don't care. I could talk we'll about vote. all this stuff all day, but we'll vote on we'll vote on it after we close the show tonight. But that's <laughs> a wrap for tonight's episode. So so thanks to everyone out there who's watching or listening to the Boss Rush After Dark. Uh, which, by the way, is always going to be the alternative topical podcast for adults on the uh, on the Boss Rush Network here. Uh, if you've enjoyed the show, uh, please leave us a five star rating and a nice review on the podcast services. Or, of course, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the video. Uh, all this really helps with our discoverability as well as our visibility. Uh, you know what? May the force be with you. You know. Uh, you know. <laughs> um, you know. Every, every, everybody's a Jedi, everybody's a Star Lord, everybody is a princess, you know. You know what they say about Disney princesses, Leron? They're all in the costumes and role play. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Uh, hey, yo. Pat, Pat, Stephanie, Corey, always a pleasure. Like, we, like, like, I do this because I love you guys, and then, and, and we do this because we love everybody out there that watches and listens to us. So, yeah. Um, so, I'm out of words. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone, and we'll be back for another all new episode of Boss Rush After Dark next week. Take care. Bye, Bye everybody. Happy Valentine's Day. If you want to see how you can become a Patreon producer, head on over to patreon.com slash boss rush network. The Patreon producers for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S. Sana Dierig, Francisco Santilan, Matthew Keel, and Todd Oxtro. Thanks for your continued support of the Boss Rush Network.